I am a mum to two girls. Um, I've got a almost four year old um, and a ten month old. Um, and I am on maternity leave at the moment, which I'm enjoying. <laughs> um, but I'm currently a nurse uh, out with that. So, um, Butterfly Baby Clinic obviously is quite exciting because I'm a professional here because I do work with mums. Um, and also as a mum. What I what I'm taking out of it as a mum is because of lockdown and resources and what is available. Um, and I think quite a lot of things have stopped and there wasn't a lot of resources, especially not free resources anyway. Um, and I think um, they've all came together and collaborated with what their specialties are and their interests and their fields um, and how can they bring that and put it all together for one resource for mums to tap into. I did have a baby in lockdown, um, but I'm thankful it wasn't the first lockdown. And I feel sorry for mums, especially if it's her first time. Like That's so isolating and really a lonely experience. And I think... Um, having a second child you know what you're going to expect to go into hospital and what that can be like and I mentally prepared myself that I would be by myself and my husband couldn't come in so um you're kind of more prepared for that but actually it's still a, a horrible place to be and, and then you realize you've got that mum guilt of oh my goodness my child's like six months she's never been to baby class she's never been to some you know you think what your first child had was it swimming lessons or was it baby gra- all this interaction you think oh my goodness we've done none of that so there's definitely positives of having a slower life and that one-to-one experience you had um, as a family unit um, when my second daughter was born and that was lovely. Um, but it's more, it's, there's so much for you as well you take out of these baby groups. You know, that social interaction with other adults, with mums, um, just even for your mental health, getting up and dressed and out the house <laughs> is quite a big thing, you know. Um, and the next thing you find yourself kind of stuck in with two children all the time and you're thinking there's nothing on Thankfully, restrictions had eased, so you could still go to the park, you could still go out, and technology has changed, so you can tap into things online, which is amazing, but um, at the same time, it's just different, it's just a, a different way of living, And but I'm thankful that I wasn't in the crux of the first one, because I think that's a really, really horrible place for mums that have had to go through that. It's even just lack of family support, isn't it? And my, fa- my family is a really big support and they're always there. And I think, I don't know, I, you think it's easier because you've had one before, but actually probably comparing the support you had first time to second time, you're then like, ah, left on your own. And just even the fact you can't have people in your house. Do you know what I mean? And it's like, you've just given birth and actually, yeah, you've not got the pressure of having your house tidy and <laughs> but people come that are unwelcome and then they overstay and you're like, ah. So there was quite a nice little lull of actually... There's no pressure. Um, but then it's just that adult chat. I think that's the biggest thing, you know, and you give so much to your children. So you've got a toddler who, she, I mean, her chat and vocabulary is amazing, but it's like all the time, isn't it? You're like, ah, try to keep that one entertained while a baby. And actually you realise how much it just lifts your spirits if you're around other people that are going through the same thing. And I think that's where, like, things like this and their social media pages or... Um, whatsapp group just knowing that in two in the morning there's other people going through the same thing and it's not just you i like the fact that it was like a a one-stop shop almost like a, everything was in the one place because sometimes you're bombarded with so much information you don't actually know where to go everybody offers you everything <laughs> you know you're on the social media you're on instagram everyone's giving you their opinion or whatever um but knowing that it was backed by the university of edinburgh was actually good because it's going to come from evidence I mean, it's not like somebody's came up with a new idea that they're just trying to think this is, or they're trying to sell your product. Um, their resources and their ideas are free or cheap. Do you know what I mean? It's not telling you that you have to have the latest modcon or you have to have, um, you know, all these things at your fingertip, but actually utilising what you have in the house and how you can make that engaging and a really nice experience for you and your baby. I know I keep going back to like Instagram, but see when you're in lockdown, like that, that becomes your reality, isn't it? You think that's like your friends <laughs> and you're following celebrities and you're thinking, you, you think that you're not achieving because you're not given what they're given. There's quite a lot of pages I follow, which might be to do with, um, you know, sensitively or whatever, but they're also marketing their own stuff, you know, so there is a side to that as well of, oh, do I want to invest that money in that? But actually it's realising that you don't have to, follow the trend or follow or pay big bucks for it but actually this is this is manageable 
the what they were all coming up with, whether it was baby massage, you know, I did pay for baby massage classes with my first daughter, but I didn't have the opportunity the second time around because there's no classes. Do you mean? But then thinking, right, well, they've thought out the box, they're now going to offer online things or the opportunity to have videos in my own time. You know, because with my daughter, I paid for the class, but only really done it at the class because you didn't really know where to fit it in. But actually, they're then highlighting to you that it, it, you can take what you want and use it in your time to make it work for you and your baby. And it's the most exhausting <laughs> full-time job I've ever had. <laughs> no time off. But I love it as well because it's so rewarding. And I just love seeing each milestone and each thing they can do. And I think second time around, I'm, there's a bit of sadness to do with that as well. Like, you want to hold on to it. You know, you're like, ah, it's amazing. She can now clap. But, oh, I want to cry because she can clap. Or she can now do that. You know, every milestone is like a huge achievement. But you're like, oh, you want to cling on to those baby years. But also, it's amazing, like, in that first year, how they go from this baby that can't, they're literally just sleeping and eating and doing nothing. And then to see how much they can grow, but how much you get back from that as well. Mums probably have that sense of empowerment and community when you all start talking and you're like, oh, actually, we're we're all in this together. <laughs> um, but creating the Facebook group, um, which is a closed group as well, so it's a safe space to be able to put things up. Um, but stay in touch with everything that's going on. You feel valued in your input. I think that was the biggest thing. Um, and knowing that you were hopefully helping to make change for other mums as well. Um, so it wasn't us coming up. We didn't come up with ideas and anything like that. But we're helping to influence it from a mother's point of view. And how that would be more better for you or better for other people. Um, and so definitely, it definitely brought us together. And think that you're also hopefully doing something good for others. So many people through lockdown and, and, and probably even pre-lockdown, if they're not around the right circle and around the right people, that could be the most loneliest journey they've ever been on. But realising there's other people out there and just little things to help you. Because see, when you're sleep deprived, to think of like a task to do, do you know what I mean? Like, what, do I play? Oh, what can I play with my daughter or what can I introduce to make it... Do you know what I mean? So like, sometimes you just need somebody to spark that imagination in you and then you're like, okay, that's all I need. I'm going to go now and I'm going to get this and I'll, eh, we can do it together. You know, if we're busy working full time and you're engaging your brain in that capacity, you know, like as a professional, you are, your identity is almost that, you know, so you get up every day and you've got that and then all of a sudden that's stripped away from you. And sometimes I think, I think that's what mums kind of struggle with because you're like, well, we're trying to find your new role. And I think not doing that alone really helps. Do you know what I mean? And it's not that you forget who you once were because you still have that part to you. But now my most important thing is being a mum. You know, and even though you have hard days, the the benefits definitely outweigh that. But not to do it in isolation is so much better because if you know you've got that, people you can text, people you can count on, people you can just say, oh, that was rough. <laughs> and they say, I get you. <laughs> You know, like, just to know that at four in the morning you're not the only one that's up because it feels like the whole world's sleeping. You know, but I think that sense of community is really important. 